Hey friends, what's up? It's April. Welcome back to my channel. I have read a lot of books over the last three months, so I've come here to tell you all about them because there are some that I really need to talk to people about. So if you've read them, please, for the love of God, post a comment down below so I can scream at you. Thank you. So we're going to go in sections because there's a lot and I like to categorize things. So the first section is CBCA books. So I made a mission for myself this year to read every honor book and winner for the Children's Book of Australia Awards. So what is it called? Children's Book Council of Australia Awards. Okay. So there are picture books going all the way up to middle grade and young adult. So if there's any you want to skip, I'll leave timestamps, but I just decided to read them all for funsies and I'm going to tell you whether or not I agree with the winners. Okay, let's go. So for new illustrator, there was only one winner and that is Tiny Wonders. And this is by Sally Sewell Hahn. This is an absolutely adorable picture book all about finding the colour in an otherwise dull existence. This is what the illustration style looks like. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I really enjoyed it. And it has lots of information about flowers. flowers. So yes, I gave this a four stars. It was really, really cute. I brought this to put the books on, but they're kind of too big to put on. So maybe I won't do that. <laughs> no, maybe I'll put them, I'll put them at the top. That's just gonna fall over. The next one is the Eve Pownell Award, which is children's nonfiction. So the two honor books were Wild Australian Life by Len Leonard Cronin, illustrated by Chris Nixon. And this is just a nonfiction book all about Australian animals, but the illustrations were stunning. And if this is the type of book you're looking for, that is great, but otherwise it's a lot of information to take in. Um, so yeah, I gave it a four stars. I really liked it though. The other honour book was Come Together, Things Every Aussie Kid Should Know About the First Peoples. This is by Isaiah Firebrace with illustrations by Jalen Biumawai and design is by Keisha Leon. This is perfect. It literally goes through everything, like it says in the title, everything an Aussie kid should know. Um, it's a great starting point for kids and I thought the illustrations were perfect, very simple but very effective illustrations and I thought it was fantastic. I gave it five stars and this is one that I would really like to buy a copy for my shelves. And the winner was Deep by Jess McGeeshan and I gave this a four stars. It is basically about all things deep like deep in the ocean, deep in the earth, deep in space, deep in our bodies, um, deep in the past, deep in cities. Um, a very interesting concept, but ultimately I just feel like Come Together should have won, in my personal opinion. Otherwise, a great selection. Okay, moving on to early childhood. Um, the two honor books were Paradise Sands by Levi Pinfold. This was a very odd story. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. The illustration style is quite realistic, but it's basically about this family that comes by this house and the house is so enticing and it sucks you in so that you never want to leave. And it's all about a girl who's deciding whether she wants to leave or stay. And it was very interesting. Um, I gave it a four stars. Very good. Then next we had Dirt by Sea as the other on, on a book by Michael Wagner, illustrated by Tom Jellett. I adored this so much. It is all about this girl and her dad who go on a road trip around Australia um, in her late mother's combi van. It's told in a comic book format and I just thought it was just so it was just so good. It was so heartfelt and I also loved visiting all of the Aussie locations. It was just a beautiful, beautiful story. And the winner for this one was called My Strange Shrinking Parents by Zeno Sorda. This is probably in my top two picture books of all time. Oh my god. Um, it follows this 
young boy, as he grows up throughout his life, he notices that as he grows, his parents become smaller and smaller. Um, now his parents are immigrants. Basically the message is, it sort of says in the start of the book, to all the parents who burden and narrow their own lives in the hope that their children will be free to go further. Oh my gosh, this was just absolutely stunning. The illustration style is so beautiful. And oh my gosh, I just wanted to cry while reading this. Oh gosh, my heart. Absolutely stunning story. Five stars, this is definitely worth the winning spot. Jokes, those were the picture books. These are the early childhood books. Um, the honour books were Bev and Kev by Katrina Germain and Mandy Foote. This is all about two unlikely friends who find hope and faith in each other when others put them down and it's so wholesome. I gave it four stars. Then we have Snap by Anna Walker, which I love the illustration style, but the words are literally just like drop, splish, 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 splash. Um, it just, it didn't really have a deep story behind it, but the illustration style is just stunning. So yeah, three stars for the story, five stars for the illustrations, so four stars overall. And the winner in this section is Where the Liar Bird Lives by Vicky Conley and Max Hamilton. Um, this is all about this family who's gone to find the mysterious liar bird. And this was honestly my least favorite. I gave it a three stars. I just don't really vibe with the illustration style. And I just thought the story overall was a bit meh. So I don't think this deserved the winning spot, to be honest. I think Bev and Kev should have got that spot. Okay, moving into the middle grade, younger readers. Um, on a books we have Evie and Rhino by Nerida McMullen, illustrated by Astrid Hicks. This is a wholesome story about a young girl who two years previously lost her mother and since then she has been selectively mute. And she lives in the late 1800s in Australia, down near Melbourne. One day she comes across a rhino on the beach and she sort of realizes that this rhino has come from a shipwreck where these animals were on their way to be in like a zoo circusy type of thing and so she saves rhino and they form the most wholesome of bonds and they have to stop the evil people at the zoo it's wholesome lovely loved it four stars the other honor book was the raven song by zana Freylon and ben mcdibble Brand McDibble, sorry. This was very intriguing to me at first because it's set in the future and people live in these tiny, like, fenced off areas and they're not allowed to go outside. And basically, there's no technology anymore. Um, people in this, people in the future are just trying to bring balance to the world again. So we're following dual timeline, it's in that future and back in present day and how those two storylines connect it's very it was very interesting but like very boring at the same time um yeah three stars and the winner for that one was runt by craig sylvie i talked about this in my last wrap up i so 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 adored this it's all about this young girl who lives in outback australia who enters her dog in a agility competition it's adorable and wholesome four stars i definitely think that it should have won it was really good and then lastly for the older readers category we have the other side of tomorrow by Haley lawrence this is very much along the same lines as before i die by jenny downham they are very very similar um we're following a main character who has terminal cancer she's sort of discovering what is most important to her throughout whatever time she has left i gave that four stars the next honor book was completely normal and other lies by biffy james absolutely loved biffy james's writing it's all about this girl who has this sort of secret friendship slash relationship with this guy after they accidentally bump into each other when she's leaving therapy so they sort of bond over that and other struggles that they're having but the catch is that he has a girlfriend um so they don't talk at school at all um but they connect every thursday afternoon after her therapy appointment and then he tragically dies in an accident so it's like learning how to cope with grief when 
nobody even knows that you were speaking to that person. Very interesting concept, loved the writing, four stars. And the winner was Neverlanders and this is a graphic novel retelling of Peter Pan. It's freaking epic, five stars. Please go and pick this up. It so deserves the winning spot. The art style is just awesome. And I'm gonna need more books in this universe ASAP, okay? It's so good. Those are all the CBCA books. Wow, I spoke for way too long on those. So let's move on. Okay, the next category we're gonna talk about is Buzzwordathon. So every month I've been doing the Buzzwordathon hosted by Books and Lala, where you pick a book that matches that month's buzzword. So in September, the buzzword was game related words. So for this, I read The Dead Fathers Club by Matt Haig. Club, clubs. Um, and this was very meh. I gave this three stars. It's all about this guy whose dad died. It's actually a retelling of, I can't even remember, some Shakespeare play. Definitely not one of Matt Haig's best. It's all about this boy whose father dies and then his ghost appears in front of him saying that his uncle Alan killed him and he has to kill him in revenge so that his father can move on peacefully to the afterlife. It was okay. I gave it three stars. It's going to be unhauled and I'm probably never going to think about it again. In October, the buzzword was magic. So I read Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. This is a sapphic fantasy standalone all about this plague that is sweeping across the world and these two witches who have to come together to save it. Um, this was good, but it didn't really leave a lasting impression on me. So yeah, I gave it three stars and I'm probably going to sell this one on my Depop shop. So if you're interested in the Alcrate edition of Sweet and Bitter Magic, okay, it'll be on there very soon. Gave that three stars three stars. Then this month the buzzword was good so I read Up All Night with a Good Duke by Amy Rose Bennett. This is the first book in the Byronic Book Club series and I absolutely loved this because it has so many of my favorite things in it. The main heroine is a, well she was a finishing school teacher but she wants to open her own academy for girls to actually study things that men do. Um, but secretly at night she is a romance author and the love interest um, is a widow and has a 15 year old daughter. It also has fake dating in it. Oh my god. <gasps> Excellent. It did get a little bit too cheesy though at times so I gave it a four stars but I really 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 loved it. Alright then I had a plan to reread one of my 2013 favorite books every month to see if they were still my favorite books. And I'm almost at the end of that list. So let's discuss. In September, I reread A Million Sons by Beth Revis, which is the second book in the Across the Universe series. Still absolutely adore this series with my whole heart. I gave this one, I can't even remember. It was between a four and a 4.5, I think. But I just, it's such a great series. So then in October, I reread Shades of Earth. This gets 4.5, I just, the ending, I just needed a little bit more, maybe like an, another epilogue about where they are now. I just need a tiny bit more, but wow, the suspense, top tier. Love that series. And then after rereading those, um, there are some short stories that go along with that series that are included in these collections. So in this one, it's called After. The story is called The Other Elder. And that was very interesting. I think I gave all of these short stories three stars, I'm pretty sure. I think I was just hoping that one of them would take place after Shades of Earth, but none of them do. Then in Shards and Ashes, we had um, Love is a Choice, which maybe this one got four stars, I can't remember, but I really enjoyed that one. And then in Defy the Dark, we had Night Swimming. And that got three stars as well. Anyways, moving on to November, I reread Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Ah! So I was obsessed with this back when it came out in 2013. And I was so scared to reread it because I thought it was going to be terrible. But it wasn't terrible. But it, I don't think it deserves the five star rating that I gave it back then. But it's so fun and so compulsively readable. Like, can't put it down. But a lot of people don't like it because it has cheating in it, which I totally understand. But I just thought it was so fun. So I gave that four stars upon reread. And the last book for that rereading project is Lola and the Boy Next Door. And I'm going to be reading it next month. So I'll finally be finished with that. Uh, moving on, I'm doing the year-long magical readathon 
thingy. <laughs> so for September, I had to read a book with a romance. So I read Barbarian's Lady by Ruby Dixon. I am reading all of the books in what they call the Rubyverse, um, which are basically the Ice Planet Barbarian series and all of the spin-offs that come with it. So I'm reading them in that order. So this was the next one I had to read. And did I enjoy it? I don't know because my phone is up there. No, I didn't enjoy it. Apparently I gave it 2.5 stars and apparently it wasn't memorable enough for me to remember anything about it to tell you about. <laughs> Let me see if I wrote a review on Goodreads. <laughs> I just wrote, they both gave me the ick. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, then in October, I had to read a book with a map and I counted Dirt by Sea for that one because it had the map of Australia at the front. And then in November, I had to read a book at risk of unhaul. And for that, I actually counted Anna and the French Kiss because I didn't know if I was going to love it or hate it upon reread. And obviously, if I hated it, I would have unhauled it, but I'm keeping it. Oh, okay. Moving on to other books that I read in the Rubyverse. So I read Barbarian's Lady, didn't love it. Then I read a short story called Rukar's Story. And basically these little short stories are like bedtime stories that the parents are telling to their children so they're cute but they're like really short so I gave it three stars. Then I read Prison Planet Barbarian which I gave three stars. It was fine but then I read The Corsair's Captive which is the first book in the Corsair's series and I'm obsessed. Oh my god. I gave it five stars. I am obsessed with this couple. Like, I could read a whole series just based off of them alone. Their chemistry was just so strong and it was like a friends to lovers and it was just so good. <sighs> I love space pirates. Okay, moving on. We have three sections left. Fiction, non-fiction, and currently reading. So, other fiction books that I read. I read Starbringer by Tracy Wolfe and Nina Croft. This is the first book in a new sci-fi series. It's like the equivalent of romanticy but like sci-fi. If there's a term for that please let me know because we need one. Basically a bunch of characters find themselves trapped together on a spaceship trying to outrun people who are trying to kill them. So we have a princess, a prisoner, a con artist, a warrior, a priestess, a mercenary, and it says, and an asshole in charge of us all. So it's like an enemies to lovers, but also like found family, throw a bunch of misfits together, um, lots of secrets, um, the galaxy that they're um, currently living in, the sun is dying and they have to find a cure. It's so good. I loved it. I gave it 4.5 stars. What kind of took me out of the story a little bit is because this is set in an entirely like fictional galaxy. Um, so obviously they're all aliens, but there's multiple times where they refer to themselves as human. They're like, oh, like we're only human. Like I'm only human. Like you're not human. What are you talking about? <laughs> Your skin is literally silver. What are you talking about? <laughs> Anyways, I really enjoyed it. Can't wait for the next book. It was so fun. Then I read Masquerade by Terry Pratchett. Um, I'm buddy reading a bunch of the Discworld books with my best friend Kara and this was the one that we were up to and I didn't love this one. I was kind of going through a slump when I was reading it so maybe that's why but I've also I think I've discovered that I need to read these books physically rather than on audio otherwise a lot of it just flies way over my head I don't, and I don't know why so the next book that I read in the Discworld I'm gonna read with my eyeballs and see if that makes a difference but um I guess I gave this three stars it's like a it's Terry Pratchett's take on Phantom of the Opera um so yeah then I read Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. Um, I gave it four stars, but it's probably more deserving of a 3.5. Just the first half, nothing happened. Like, so much of that could have been cut out. But then the rest was really good. And I loved the ending. So, yeah, four stars. Then I read Laura Olympus Volume 5, which was great. I gave it four stars. I love the slow burn romance. I just wish I knew more about Greek mythology so that I could understand who all these characters are because I have no idea but can I be bothered to actually research that? No. So I'm just here for the romance. It gets four stars because can they please hurry up and get together? Thank you. 
Then I read The Last Book Wanderer by Anna James. This is the final book in the Pages & Co series, which is one of my favourite middle grade series of all time. It's all about this girl called Tilly who discovers that she's part of a secret society of book wanderers, which is essentially where you can travel into books. Um, it's so good, so wholesome. But when I was reading this, um, my grandmother passed away and I was going through a really rough time. So I think that really affected my enjoyment of it because I was just so sad while I was reading this um, and it took me forever so yeah it, it's a four stars but if I reread it it might be a five but I I was just yeah not in the right headspace to read it and then lastly in the fiction section I read Binding and Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh oh my god I'm obsessed with these just be warned going in these are super dark um, lots of trauma um, lots of tragedy lots of sadness but like the connection between Johnny and Shannon I love them so much I gave them five stars and these books like they're my Roman Empire I think about them every day and also if you're wondering they edited out the problematic slurs and everything that were in them in the self-published editions which is a plus then I read, um, there's a book by the same author called Seven Sleepless Nights, which is a bunch of, like, short stories and novellas that are set in her different book series. So I read all of the ones that are a part of the Boys of Tommen series, and it was just great to get that extra bit of information about them because I love them. And if you're wondering, you can read all of those short stories before going into Saving Six, which is the next book in the series, so... Okay, moving into non-fiction, I read two other non-fiction books over the last three months. I read Our Voices from the Heart, which is actually really sad to talk about now because the referendum, yeah, if you know, you know. This is just essentially a collection of Indigenous people and their stories and opinions and how this movement came to be. Yeah, I gave it four stars. It was good. And then I read The Woman in Me by Britney Spears, which I'm sure a lot of you have read as well. I really, I, it's, I didn't enjoy it because obviously she's been through so much shit in her life, but it was really insightful and I'm so glad she finally gets to speak her truth. Yeah, five stars. It was really good. I don't know if I'll ever reread it, but I'm glad that I read it. Okay, finally, we've made it to the last section of this video, which is books that I'm currently reading. Because the day I'm filming this, it is the 22nd of November. Um, I only think I'm going to finish one more book, and that is Saving Six by Chloe Walsh, which I just talked about before, but it's the third book in the Boys of Tommen series. I'm listening to the audiobook. I'm just dying to get my grubby little hands on Saving Six and Redeeming Six when they come out in paperback on the 28th. Or is it the 27th? I don't know. Either way, that afternoon after school, I am running to Big W and buying those books. So that's probably the only other book that I'll finish this month because I'm so busy at work marking all these assessments and um, getting reports ready and stuff. So yeah, that's probably the only book I'll finish, but I am in the middle of two other books. Um, the first one is Court of the Undying Seasons by A.M. Strickland. This is so good so underrated. I haven't heard anyone talk about this but I am loving it. It's about a vampire school and they have like these different um like factions that focus on different things like the red court is like all about lust and killing <laughs> and silver court is all about like history and like libraries and it's just so interesting and I am absolutely adoring it and I'm pretty sure it's queer maybe? I'm not sure but it is so good. Hop on this guys if you haven't and then the other book that I'm currently reading is Big Love by Brooke Blurton. Um, Brooke Blurton was on a recent season of The Bachelorette. She is the first queer Aboriginal woman to be on The Bachelorette and this is her memoir and I just fell in love with her personality so I wanted to read her book. So yeah I'm like 20 pages in though. I just am struggling to find time to read books physically but there you have it those are all the books that i've been reading recently um let me know what you've been reading and if you've read any of these and thanks for checking in i will see you guys soon in a new video